Today we're going to set up a VM Rover using a Raspberry Pi. In order to do that, we're going to install the Raspberry Pi operating system, install the VM server application, make all the connections between the Raspberry Pi and the VM Rover hardware, and then drive the Rover using the built-in web functionality. If you stick around until the end, I'll give you a few final thoughts about how I thought the process went, a few things to look out for, and some places that it could be improved. We're going to set up the Raspberry Pi to run the VM software and the first step is to actually install the Raspberry Pi operating system to the SD card um, that will be used during boot of the Raspberry Pi. So the VM Rover instructions link you to the Raspberry Pi website where you can download this imager application. We install and run it and now we go through the steps of installing the operating system onto an SD card. I've connected that SD card to my laptop and I'm going to write it to that drive. So I'm going to start by selecting the operating system. The instructions tell us to choose Raspberry Pi OS Other and Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. The Raspberry Pi 4, which is the one that I'm using, is a 64-bit architecture, so that is the best choice um, for the operating system. And we're going to use the no desktop version or the light version because I don't care about getting onto a desktop and connecting an HDMI um, monitor and doing all those things. I'm primarily going to be SSHing into the device and controlling it or issuing commands that way. If you do want to be able to connect a monitor and get a nice graphical user interface, then there's nothing wrong with installing the full version of the Raspberry Pi OS, but most of the time you're going to be using terminal anyway, so may not be the best option, but you can choose either one. So we select that. Um, we also want to make sure we set ourselves up for the ability to connect to it. Otherwise, we will have to connect a monitor, etc. So I'm going to set the host name so I know what this Raspberry Pi is called. I'm going to call it VM Rover. I'm going to turn on SSH so I can remotely connect to the device. Uh, I'm going to set in my username and password just my preferences and I'm going to head ahead and configure the wireless LAN so that I can connect to the board wirelessly and I don't have to connect a even a cable um, all right Let's see make sure I set the correct country okay there we go finally found it uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up my locale as well I'm in central time zone. All right, we're going to save that. We're going to choose our storage media, which is my SD card, and we're going to go write. Okay, so now that the writing to the card is complete, we can remove this SD card, close out the imager application, and we'll go install the SD card on the Raspberry Pi, and let's try connecting to it. So uh, it was called Viam Rover local was the name I'm gonna log in as Nicholas and let's see what happens and now we're in so now I'm on the Raspberry Pi on the Viam Rover connected wirelessly I can now do things on that board the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and update our Raspberry Pi operating system see if there are any packages we need to do this is again just following the instructions from VM uh, directly so nothing there to be upgraded then we want to make sure we turn on support for all of the peripherals so we want to be able to support spy i squared c serial etc and do that and then we'll finish uh, and we need to reboot the device we give it some time to reboot let's try reconnecting again to the device and we're back in. So now we got to install the 
VM server application. This is the application that will actually be used to control the robot. So again, we're just going to follow the instructions from VM, um, follow along from their documentation, which is pretty good in terms of getting their things set up. First thing we got to do is actually log in to the VM website. We're going to add robot. Uh, we got a name. So let's say, you know, um, local rover. Um, add robot. It gives us instructions right here on this page. So we're just going to go ahead and copy these instructions. Right, we um, use the curl command to download the application. We uh, to configure it, we then download the VM server um, application as well. And then we wait on this page. Right, so now we waited a little bit of time and now the robot is configured and then we go to the config tab. Um, okay, and before we go ahead and configure the robot on this VM page, let's go ahead and install the Raspberry Pi into the rover and make all the necessary wire connections. To install the Raspberry Pi, we have to remove the top, and that's what these Allen keys are for that they provided. So we just find the right one. The biggest one here, and we take off the top. We then take the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we need our four screws and our cables. These look like the smallest Allen key. We're going to install the Raspberry Pi this way. So we put it down and we line up these screws. Before we make the connections, let's kind of walk through what the different things we have here are. So these are the dual drive motors with suspension, the springs. Uh, these two extra springs here, you can replace them. Um, if you want to, for a little bit stiffer suspension. And then here are the encoders on the motors. So this is what lets us know how many revolutions have gone by, where we are in terms of the positioning of the motors. Um, this is the motor driver. So we can't directly drive the motors from the Raspberry Pi. This is happens in all robots pretty much. So um, this is what's driving the motors and we're gonna command those drive signals from the Raspberry Pi. Then over here on the top is connected the camera. It's a 720p webcam. It's using a USB to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So if your board doesn't use or it doesn't support USB, you're not going to, be able to use a webcam. Here's our accelerometer. This is what you know gives us um, acceleration information. And then this is our uh, power converter, buck converter. This is what takes in power, um, connects to the batteries, and converts it into a voltage that's suitable for the rest of the electronics. Let's go ahead and make our wired connections. So these cables here are to make some connections that are not already soldered directly into the board. So the instructions do tell you the color of the wires. That's good to help you kind of keep track of it going forward. Okay, so one thing if you never dealt with a board before um, to be aware of, once you find pin one, it always goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way down the line. Um, for pin one, there's usually a little mark on the board to tell you um, this one has a little notch in the corner to tell you that that's pin one. Um, but the diagram itself also helps you understand where pin one is and then how to count. 
So one kind of row is odd numbers, the other row is are even numbers, and you just go back and forth that way. Okay, connecting the cables is the part you definitely want to kind of double check, triple check as you're doing it. And this is the part where you can damage something if it's wired incorrectly and you know it sucks when that happens if you turn everything on and it's wired incorrectly and something something blows up um, that really sucks all right so now we want to power it up so let's just try so we're gonna flip it over get our batteries to start hopefully it doesn't blow up so flip it on see the raspberry pi light come on don't smell any smoke. Uh, uh, could have probably left the cover off, put the batteries in, turned it on to be able to get access to the electronics, kind of see if any of them were getting hot or anything. Um, too late now. So, you know, but everything looks all right. At least from what I can tell. So we'll now go back to software and see next steps. Okay, so now that we've gone and made all the connections between the Raspberry Pi and the VM Rover hardware, we need to configure our robot in the VM website and configure it with the correct components and services etc. So I'm going to use 2010, 2022-10B. That seems to be the one the instructions say to use. Um, if I look over here on the config, that lines up with what we did. So there's, yeah, 37 is right encoder, 35 is left encoder. Okay, so that looks right. Um, we go back to components, we should now see all the things. I guess we hit save config. I go to the base, turn on the camera here. Shouldn't be able to make a turn. Okay. Overall, the process was fairly easy even if you've never worked with hardware before. I think the instructions were good, but they became a little bit unclear right at the end after I configured the robot and wanted to verify that everything was working. Some of the wire connections were a little bit difficult to make, so be careful that you're not applying too much force and end up damaging a pin. I do wish that they provided the data sheets so that I could easily find more information about the hardware. I can probably find the data sheets using Google, but it'd be really nice if I could just get those directly from their website. The web interface was really helpful in being able to quickly verify that the cameras and the motion control was working, but I'm a little bit concerned about having that always be an option. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Talk to you soon. Later.